Well, we may not have had any uh, very many horses racing today. Just my boy Three Point in tonight for his first lifetime start. But it has already be, been a jam-packed day. We had a number of horses prepping and training today. Middle of the week, we had some uh, issues to sort out on the weekend with Grace and Northern Blizzard. We had them in to qualify today. Renegade Gypsy was going a prep mile. That was a busy, busy, busy day. Now, of course, I'm a glutton for punishment. So uh, when I thought I was going to Mount Gilead, Mount Gilead's a fair down here. We raced here last year. Uh, when I thought I was going down here to uh, race, I had told uh, the gentleman that uh, Ron Stack that trained uh, that colt that I wanted, or ban him, doesn't matter. I told somebody I was going to be down here, and they listed me on their horses. And then uh, Jason and I decided not to go to this fair, that in fact, we were going to go to the fair tomorrow in Canton, Ohio. So we listed eight horses in Canton, and uh, <laughs> Ron listed his horses down here. So he called me, he didn't have a driver, and wanted me to drive them, and what are you going to do? I did what I thought was the right thing. I told him I'd come down here and drive his horses. So I'm literally on my way down the road an hour and a half to Mount Gilead to race horses tonight at the fair. None of ours are in, but I'm in. So that's uh, that's that. You know, you got to do what's right sometimes. Um, so my day started. We get up. I get up this morning. Good day. Uh, Starbucks wasn't open, so that sucked. But I, I got a little smoothie from Pulp. You'll remember Pulp from my story about delaying the races at Northfield Park the other day. Pulp was open, got a pulp, got the big girl a bath at the car wash, went down to uh, went down to the burn. Now we had a number of horses training today. Wanted to train Jazzy Judy and Duke Dio, Duke Dio a little bit. They're gonna be qualifying next week probably, so I wanna to, want to train them up a little bit. Uh, both were very, very good. Jazzy Judy was awesome. Of course, she's coming off that high AST. This is the same time last year virtually and the same thing that happened she tied up pretty good much worse last year not as bad this year i trained her just just a walk in the park for a day two six last half and one one uh duke dale made a little break in behind me but whatever not worried about duke uh, he's been good and will continue to be good we'll qualify him next week uh coincidentally we're schooling um just so you know schooling stonebridge dolce again tomorrow and schooling um a more deaner prepping for his race in Philadelphia. He drew the seven hole. A little bit of luck. I don't want to complain. We've been pretty lucky all year. But gee, for a seven hole, that sucks. So uh, on my way here yesterday, Steve Palermo. Steve's a good friend of mine. You guys, we've had horses with him. I don't know if he has any horses with us right now, but a uh, good friend, good guy, called me and uh, asked about uh, there was a horse on on gate and the, the auction was literally ending. Literally ending. Like three minutes left in the auction. And he wanted to know about a horse. I didn't know anything about it. I tried to find out real quick. He ended up buying the horse. And the horse is eligible to the final also. The Stallion Series final on Sunday. So that horse is also entered. I forget his name. Uh, I don't know. Patriot Pilgrim. I don't know. Uh, he's got uh, the two hole I think he drew. Scott Zeron I thought was staying in Kentucky to drive our horses. And other ones. But I don't blame them. They go for twenty thousand in Kentucky and fifty thousand in Philadelphia. So I'm not. I guess I should be shocked that, that Scotty opted to go to Philly when I found out he was going to Philadelphia. Uh, we enlisted Scott Zero on the horses in Philadelphia. So they're in to go Sunday. They're prepping tomorrow. Uh, just a light schooler, maybe two one something four days. It should be fine. Um, so I get to the track. I pull up. So and Sue uh, had a little flipper. Had a little flipper and broke one of the jaw cards. Now I gotta be honest. We were warned she can be a little bit of a little bit of a fireball. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't heard it in a long time. I saw her acting up in the track today. John Oliverio <laughs> said he can be a rascal. <laughs> so she was a little little rascal today. She uh, broke the end off the jaw card, and laid down a bit, put a scratch on her eye. Now will that impact her tomorrow? Sometimes when uh, goofy horses go on tilt, yeah, it's it's hard to get them squared away in the day. I thought she was coming in awesome. She trained so good the other day. Not to say that she won't be good tomorrow, but uh, I have to believe that this maybe uh, 
uh, could cause some, some problems for tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see how old Sue is tomorrow. Um, as I said, Jazzy Judy, uh, Duke Dio trained great together. Two six last half and one one. Now I went first trip with uh, Sweet Aunt Pete, and she literally lost her right front shoe and come up, cut my suit, put a little cut in my suit on the leg. I never thought anything of it. You know, it hurt a little bit. It was right on the side of my shin bone. I got looking down about 10 minutes later. There's blood in my suit. I roll it down. Gee, she put a gash that long on my shin bone. There's, there wasn't a ton of blood. I'm not going to complain. I just put some alcohol on it and wrapped it up. But cut my leg. Uh, so I put the shoe back on her. It's going to have to be reset properly before Sunday. She trained first and second trip absolutely incredibly. Now there was some talk. Jason said, listen, we're in attention. All, you know, a lot of these two-year-old spring leagues, Jimmy's on Lasix, do you want to put her on Lasix? I understood the argument completely. Um, and somewhere inside me said, yeah, it makes sense. But I just didn't want to. There was no indications that uh, Sweet Upbeat has ever bled. And we've never had a problem with her bleeding. Now that's not to say, I hope I don't jinx myself uh, for Sunday, but I've never had a problem with her bleeding. She spoke great today after a training mile, and she looked good. Very, very good. I'll be completely upfront and frank with everybody. Jimmy didn't. There was no particular reason he didn't. He just didn't have a good training day. Coming off bad, bad blood work last week, and you know we had to tinker with his shoes again. We went to try and put the uh, uh, flip flops back on him because the burrs were adequate, but his feet were sore. You know they weren't doing what we need them to do. So we switched him back to the flip flops. Tried to lower him a little bit more. Hit his elbow. Training didn't hit it hard, but just scuffed it up a little bit. He didn't have a good day training. It's going to happen. You know, horses persevere and move forward. Good horses. He's a good horse. So I'm not really that worried about old Jim Jim. Um, we did make some shoeing changes immediately after the training trip. Now, uh, he didn't train as hard as I thought he would. I trained Sweet on Pete two minutes last half and 58 with a bow in her neck, and she was exceptionally good. Jimmy went a mile in 2.7. Um, I didn't want to push him because I knew he wasn't having a good day. So he went a mile on 2.7, was adequate, I guess. We'll probably come back with another mile on 2.12 on Thursday, which allows me to see how this shoeing is, how Jimmy is, how he's feeling. He just didn't have a good day. But you know what? He's got five days to the final. I could come out of here and bullshit you and say, oh, Jimmy was so good today. No. Not always going to be great days. I don't care what athlete you are, not basketball, football, baseball, any sport on earth. You could never say, oh, no, I had a great day. Almost every day is a great day. Come on. We're going to have bad days. Jimmy didn't have a good day. Now it's our job. Make sure his best day is in five days from today. So uh, Pete was awesome. Jimmy wasn't. He was so-so. But at the same time, I think we know what was going on. Still working away on that blood work. Still trying to get him uh, his blood back on track. Get him back sound. Get him back comfortable. He's got these two races left. And he's had a great year for us. But... We would like to finish it off with a bang. So we're working diligently to get Jimmy, Jimmy, back on track. Now, in between trips of Jimmy, I had a very odd, I guess it shouldn't be odd. You guys watched the S race last night. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, we got him back on track. So it, it took a long time, a lot of work, a lot of vet work, a lot of work, a lot of um, investigation to get yes to where he was last night. Now, in case you were in a cave or maybe you're stranded somewhere on a desert island, uh, yes, obliterated last night. Somebody literally said, I knew they would. Why didn't you just win by two lengths? Yeah, I could have won by two lengths. But I wanted to see what yes was going to do also. I knew he was good last night when I warmed him up. But winning him 55 and 4 by two lengths is not the same as winning by 15 lengths and 53. And I wanted to see what... And, and that was yes. Like, that's him. Right? He loves trouncing them and if he's feeling good that's what you get and you know Jason was joking about it today you know we don't want to have him too good Anthony if you send him to the Yonkers well he's not going to stay in Northfield forever right unless he can do it in the open I don't mind racing for 17,000 every week sure I guess it's not as good as racing for 40 at Yonkers but uh, at the same time uh, you know Jason and Dr. Latessa and Lauren deserve all the accolades getting that horse back to where he was we made some significant shoeing changes and I, and I told you last night in the video how we got to there it was just simply by saying 
yes is gone. The yes we remember is gone. Now we have this man of many missions horse in front of us. We need to strip it all down and start over. And that is when we started to get to the bottom of, of yes. You know, anybody, any normal people, especially horsemen, trainers, drivers, you get this, you get locked into something, right? I know this horse because, you know, I've driven him forever. I've had him forever. I broke yes. Trained him down. I know him. No, you don't. It's not the same horse anymore. So you have to you have to figure out exactly what pieces of the old yes are missing or where they're at and they're not in the right place. Put them back together. And, it, and at that point, it doesn't even mean that you have the old yes. You might have a better yes. And I can tell you one thing. It's been a long time since yes looked as good as he did last night. So uh, in between trips, I had somebody call and offer us a, a lot of money for yes. I, I don't think enough where... And I, I was very clear to, to my partners and, and our clients on yes. You know, there's a lot of people. That, the, the site was set up in, in such a way where it's very fluid. And there's a lot of people that dumped their shares over the last month. Maybe they thought that yes was gone. It was never to return. But um, patience is a virtue, as they say. Uh, and uh, it took a long time to get them back. But I am not shocked at all that... Um, that he did come back, and I'm not shocked that somebody did uh, call looking to buy him. But you know, the money just wasn't enough. Where to me, I'm Switzerland. I'll go with the flow. If you guys want to sell them, fine. But it didn't take long to figure out what the what the temperature was of our clients. Knows right across the board uh, to sell yes, and I don't blame them. You don't. You can't replace a horse like yes. We can anyway. You know, you pay a lot of money, you can replace them maybe, but it's not easy. It's very difficult to replace. Like this isn't it, between this horse and, and globe trotting, the two best horses we have. I think I could be missing somebody. You know, we can't talk about the two-year-olds. We're not going to put them in a position to, to be, you know, flag bearers just yet. But um, you know, these two horses are, are extremely talented animals, and um, you can't replace them. If you could, people wouldn't be looking to buy them. <laughs> so. Um, the, the answer of no was loud and clear uh, from almost all of our clients. And I, I wasn't surprised, as I said. I, I, there's lots of times when I pushed you and a lot of people to sell. And, and we've, we've made sure that we sold them. But when it comes to this particular horse, yes, he beat no one last night. No one. But at the same time, and he sure looked good doing it. So, um, you know, is, is this the beginning? And I said this last week. I told you guys I started seeing signs of the old yes showing up right signs of the horse that we all grew to love showing up last week and I had told somebody when we we're in uh, Joe McIsaac and Harry we were joking and I had to get going you know it's one o'clock uh yesterday and I'm in Ontario I said I gotta get going I got yes to race tonight he goes oh what's he in I said he's in to go at Northfield and, and he's gonna visit Chinatown tonight he's going right down to Chinatown <laughs> but um just just so happy so um Yes, was absolutely fantastic last night. I got an offer in between um, trips of Slim Jimmy and um, Slim Jimmy and uh, Sweet Up Pete, and uh, a resounding no across the board for for a sale of Yes. And I don't blame anybody. I was indifferent either way, and I guess somewhere inside me, I didn't want to sell him either. So uh, a big no on the sale for a Yes. Um, were we welcome? Uh, not surprised. You guys knew this was coming. She raced last night. Should have won. Okay, you raced good. You finished second. Good for you. Great job. Uh, but you should have won. And uh, she raced at like 10.45, and I had her on on gate at 11.05. Those were the two lines we were looking for. I think somebody will snap her up for, for good money. I mean, she's got a beautiful gait. She's got decent breeding. She's got lots of upside. She only got three wins. So I suspect somebody's going to look at her, at least uh, call and make a counter offer, uh, which we may or may not take, but... Um, you know, I think that was the line to sell War We Welcome On. She's on on gate. And then, obviously, this morning, woke up to, uh, I, I, in between trips also, I'm, I'm watching the live feed from Mohawk. How's Grace going to do? Yeah, she trained good at the farm. I think she's awesome. I think she's much better the way we ever hung up now. But that's not behind the gate at Mohawk with other horses. So uh, I watched her qualify. I thought James was very reserved with her and did the great thing, and she looked great. But how was she? So I sent James a message and I asked him, you know, how was she? And he was very happy with her. He said, you know, the last two times she made a break, you just had to watch her going up the gate and then I lost her. See, so the little pacey, you could tell she was getting a little hot. 
He said, not today. She was awesome today. Quiet as a kitten. She did everything perfect. I said, well, that's how she felt in training the other day after we made the, sh the, the shoeing and equipment adjustments on her. I think she's dialed in now. She's ready to go. Now, a no, uh, little news for you guys. Northern Blizzard. He wasn't awesome today. It didn't even look like he was ready to qualify. His foot is hurting him still. I'm worried there may be something festering in behind. I'm a little gun shy ever since my jazz, right? With things on the surface, what's in behind. I know that uh, I trained Northern Blizzard the same day I trained Grace last week at the farm. I thought he was good, but I watched him jog the next day and he was a little pinchy on that foot still. So uh, I made the decision to bring him to Ohio. So it's gonna, that's going to surprise a lot of you out there. A lot of my partners, a lot of people that own shares in, in uh, Northern Blizzard, he's coming here on Friday. I want to get a good look at him. I want to I want to take a, a real close look at him for a number of reasons. And, and as I said in a video the other day, Johnny had uh, Johnny's last week with us is this week. He's going to race Resolute Bay in the Prospect Series. He's going to race Century Invictus in the Grassroots, and then that's it for Johnny. Um, it was his decision. He he just said it. I think it's just a little too stressful for him. And um, whatever he decides, uh, I told him whatever you decide, I, I stand behind you 100. percent I appreciate all the work you've done. Uh, but that leaves Northern Blizzard in limbo. So. Uh, even made it an easier decision for me. Uh, like, Glary M can go down to Jason, and, and Century Invictus got a start or two left. Go to Harry or Jason, it doesn't matter. He's already dialed in and ready to go. Um, but Northern Blizzard is not. He's not. Um, when I saw him the other day, I think he needs to lose a little bit of weight. I think we need to work on his feet a little bit more, get him squared away. And quite frankly, the non winners of two, you saw what, what Tanzanite Tricks did to the non winners of three at the Meadows. This is the place for him to be. So I am bringing Northern Blizzard over here on Friday. Also, I just sent a personal video to the Spirit of Dio group. Um, the Spirit of Dio was just jogging two weeks ago and hit her leg. And it blew up. And the vet's just being super, super cautious with the filly. And uh, has asked us just to continue light, light work with her. And the, the problem was, I in my head, I thought we were prepping her for next week. And between the veterinarian, myself, and Jason, there was a little breakdown in community. I didn't get the proper information, but I didn't go looking for it properly. I assumed that we were working, 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 and then when the vet gave us a green light, it was put her in the race bike, go mile 55. But instead, it was very light work until the vet says you may you may proceed uh, harder with harder work with caution. So um, there's no issue there. I mean, if Spirit if it wasn't Spirit of Dio and she didn't have to race in the open, this would be a moot point. We wouldn't be talking about it, but. She is, and it is. So um, I had to reach out to everybody and say, listen, I was mistaken. She's not going to race next week. It's going to be another couple of weeks probably before we can really drop the hammer with her. It's not the end of the world. But um, I wanted to make sure I got it right. Take the foot out of my mouth from last night and give everybody the proper information. So uh, I know it's Tuesday. I know it's not midweek. And I know I gave you a video yesterday, but there's a lot of updates moving forward. Still a lot of great information and great um, points coming my way in regards to partnerships moving forward both with Ontario, Lexington, Harrisburg. You guys get, are starting to get a clear picture of what I'm trying to do now for the fall um, and I, I appreciate all the all the confidence and all the help you've given me. Uh, the Ohio sale, we're in great shape for that. Keep in mind, uh, don't write any of those Ohio horse off. There will be 25 shares left of every horse after the sale and available, but it'll just take 72 hours to get them. So, um, still lots to do in Ohio. I still gotta go to a bunch of farms this week. I probably could've went to one today. Yeah. I'll get to them, I promise. Before the 17th, I'll have some more videos for you guys. I actually did do some videos from Winback, but then I'm thinking, do I really wanna post on Ontario videos right before the Ohio sale? Probably, I guess the best thing to do is just give them to you. So I'm probably gonna post those uh, those sale videos I I, uh, I made with Mario the other day. I think there's, I don't have it with me, maybe 10 or 12, 13 videos I think that I did, courses that I thought were very interesting. A couple in there I'm almost certain we can afford and, and uh, be very, very happy to obtain any of them. Um, so we will be in action, I think, at the sale. Now, I was up last night till two o'clock in the morning, the land of Lincoln sale, so Fox Valley Standard Reds, has their own, uh, has their own, I don't know what the hell it is, Land of Lincoln sales on September 4th, this is this Saturday, 
there are some interesting horses in there. I found five I thought were very interesting. Now, I weeded out the ones that I know are going to go for a lot of money. Now, before you ask me, I did look. There is flights out there, but we do have things to do here. If I can arrange things so that I can leave after Taiwan on and absolutely be back before Slim Jimmy and Sweet on Pete, I may be able to slide out to Illinois and go to this sale. No guarantees, no promises being made. This isn't a Mount Gilead situation where I say, well, you said you'd go. Uh, no, I don't know what I'm going to do for sure, but I can tell you this much. Uh, on September the 4th, which is a Saturday, there are five horses selling in Illinois that I like. I'm not buying five. I buy a couple of them. So, um, I know there's a couple of hardcore Illinois clients out there that have been long awaiting our return to Illinois. This could be the year. So, I will talk to all of you very soon. As you can see, there's just a ton uh, rattling around in my head. It's run I'm running out of air in my head with everything rattling around in there. The horses overall train good day. Yeah, it was a little bit of a bummer of Jimmy, but he'll bounce back. He's a good colt, and we'll get him squared away for Sunday. So with that, I will talk to you all very soon. I don't like the clouds that are forming. I, I listen, my loyalty only runs so deep, and if it's raining down here, I'm going back home. Talk to you soon.